Hey guys, I just thought of one more um, cool thing that I could quickly do before I go to sleep. Um, the last tutorial was fun, so I thought I might just quickly knock this out. In the last one, we had a bunch of little t we had a bunch of little platforms just laid out like this. You lay them out manually, and then they all kind of randomize and move like that. Um, what we could do is we could also have another blueprint which procedurally generates a grid. Um, which then will spawn all these platforms in in a big box or in a big line without you needing to go in and place them all one by one and they can all move randomly within that grid. It might be a bit hard to explain so let's just go ahead and let's just create it. We'll do it really quick. Um, let's just call this uh, what platform grid generator. Um, I don't know what I'm going to title this, I'll probably just title this part 3 because it's not really related to moving platforms, this is more getting into procedural generation stuff, but it's still cool nonetheless if you want to learn blueprints to just learn cool random stuff. <laughs> so anyway, let's just chuck a billboard in this and we're just going to call that center and this is just going to help us mark the center of the, the blueprints. I don't know, I'm just going to chuck this cool bubble looking thing, it doesn't really matter what you put in there. I just like having a little icon just so I can see where where that is. So that's going to be the center of our little platform grid. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go over to the construction script and what we're going to do is we're going to generate a, a grid of spawn points um, that could potentially spawn platforms. So how we're going to do that is we're going to have a for loop um, and inside of that for loop is we're going to have another for loop. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go from 0 to uh, integer minus integer. And this is going to be a variable and we're going to call that length x. Um, maybe we won't call that length x, let's call that num x. Num x. And then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to call that num y. We're going to make those public like that. And then we're going to chuck this over here copy this one and then hook up num y to that. The reason that we have minus one there is because this is going to be the number of platforms that we're going to spawn um, and because this is zero based up here if we want five platforms to spawn say if we go from zero to five that's actually going to run this loop six times so we want to go minus one from whatever number we want and then that's going to run that the proper amount of times and same for here. Okay so Inside of each of these loops, I'm just going to cache this index off here and we're going to call this loop x. Um, the reason that I save this as a... Oh, and it's, that's a local variable, by the way, because that's just only going to be used in this construction script. We don't need that anywhere else. That just helps keep things more tidy, just keeping it in the construction script only. And the reason that we cache that off, and we're going to do the same here, the reason that we cache that off is because we're going to be using these values a lot and if we don't cache that off we're going to have to connect a bunch of stuff from all the way over here up to the index and it's just going to get really tangled and messy. Um, so what we're going to do over here is we're going to say add billboard component and that billboard component we can just use our typical little lizard dude over here. Um, those values should be fine and we're going to go make transform here and then for the loc rotation and scale, we'll leave that the same. But the transform here is we're going to lay out these billboards in a grid. And the way that we're going to get those positions is they're going to be defined by these loop values here and a spacing between each of the values. So let's just do that and it'll make more sense as we go. So if we have this here, the vector, we can say uh, make vector. Um, Z is just always going to be zero. We'll always have a zero relative offset relative to the scene root. Um, but in terms of x and y, what we're going to do is we're going to get the loop x and we're going to say uh, times by float. Loop x times by float and that float is going to be a variable here which is going to be called spacing. And we might make that public. So what this is going to do, and we'll plug that into there, and we'll just quickly do the same for the y. So we'll say loop y here, get loop y, multiply that by the spacing, and we'll plug that into y like that. And if we go ahead and set our num x to say 5, 
num y to say five as well so we'll get a grid five by five and the spacing to maybe uh, I don't know maybe 500 compile save like that so now what you've noticed is we've got a grid of these little sprite things like that they're just procedurally generated out like that um, I wonder if we can rotate this yeah we can that's kinda cool so let's just fucking get rid of this wall and we might just make this out like that so we've got some more room to play around and you'll see what we got here is we have a big nice grid of potential platform points so if we go back into here um, now we've got all those billboards what we might do is we'll get the return value here and each so each time we go through this loop let's just actually make this a function we'll call we'll collapse that to a function and we'll say that's going to be called add billboard and then inside that function oh that's going to do that annoying thing okay so hang on let's let's not make that a function let's just undo that da 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 da, da. Um, and we'll just go collapse node so that's just a little thing like this a little collapse macro and we're going to call that add billboard and I didn't spell that right but I don't care I'm tired and we're going to finish this um, so the reason that I made this a collapsed graph instead of a function is because if it was a function it wouldn't be able to recognize the local variables that are local to the construction script and then I'd have to add them into this so we're not going to worry about that um, what we could do here is from this billboard is we can add an output there which is a reference to the actual billboard that was created so every time we go through this loop da 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 da, da and we create a billboard we get a reference to that billboard out here and what we can do is we can say add array here and then we can chuck this down here and this is going to be called billboard references I didn't spell that right either but bear with me um, so every every loop we're going to create a billboard and we're going to add that we're going to add a reference to that billboard into that array and the reason that we want to save that is because we are going to now spawn platforms at all of those billboards so if we go into our event graph get rid of those and on begin play we can grab out our billboard references and we can go for each loop chuck that onto there um, execute uh, here we're going to say get relative transform and then from that relative transform we're going to say spawn active from class and in that spawn active from class we're going to go platform moving platform BP that was the one we created in the first parts of the tutorial um, let's test this so we got that there it's doing its thing if we hit play nothing happens sick now why is that um, we have all our billboards, they have a transform, blah 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 blah, they've got references, we go into begin play, we go through each of our billboard references, we get their transform, and then we spawn a moving platform. Um, let's have another look at that. Did it use the right platform, moving platform, BP, yeah, so what happens if they're in the world, they do their thing. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there, let's have another look. get relative transform maybe we want world transform get yeah we want world transform I think sorry about that world transform plug that into there like that boom <laughs> oh my god look at that that is a friggin mess don't worry we're gonna fix that but this works so now we've got a platform at each of those points um, but as you could see they're all moving left to right with a distance of 500 each which we don't really want because we want them to be in a grid like that so what we could do is in a moving platform BP, this is actually kind of cool, in our variables down here, um, what we could do is we could go through each of these move positions here and we could ex click expose on spawn. So expose on spawn for each of those, uh, we'll leave cycle time off, expose on spawn for the mean cycle time and the deviation. And we'll go like that okay we need to make those editable that's fine um, and did we have a no that's all good yep that's fine so now that those are exposed and they're set to expose on spawn if we go into our thing over here and we've got our spawn actor we can actually access these values down here where's our bloody position ones our move positions 
Expose on spawn. Okay, that's it. Um, but we don't actually want to do that, do we? We want to change the billboards. Um, what if we, in setup parameters, we just add a branch in here, and we add a variable there, and we could just say, uh, stay still. So in other words, we want to override the movement. So in that case, what we'll do, um, if stay still is set to true, well, if it's set to false, we'll go ahead and we'll do our normal thing, and we'll get the positions of our billboards, um, and we'll set them as the move locations. But if we want the platform to just stay still, oops, we can just go ahead and set both of these to zero. And now the platform will just stay in a single single place. And we'll go ahead and set this cycle time down there. Man, I'm getting so tired. This is getting really sloppy, but it'll it's still a proof of concept and you'll understand you'll understand what the general idea is. Um So now, if we expose that on spawn, we don't have to worry about these anymore. We'll take those off exposed by exposed from spawn. Okay. And now if we go back into here again, we're going to need to put you in expose on spawn. And then what we'll need to do is we'll stay, stay still. Okay. And let's just make that default to false. So in here, we'll set that to true. And then we've got our mean cycle time, cycle uh, deviation, blah, 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 blah. And that's all good. So now if we go back into this, those platforms should all stay still. And they'll all spin and do their funky thing. Sick. So some of those were obviously a bit too big. So what we could do is we could increase the spacing there. But what I think would be a better alternative is if we went back into our platform BP. And it's a little bit messy, but it's okay. We can promote the minimum scale to a variable, and we can promote the maximum scale to a variable as well. Um, and with both of these, we'll set them both to editable. Expose on spawn as well. Uh, compile. So that's all good. Now if we go into our little platform grid generator, um, The options weren't there, and this, hang on, let's go platform BP. Alright, now they're there. So, mean cycle time 5, da da da, stay still, yes. Min scale, uh, let's say 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, just because we want to keep the platforms relatively small and close together. So, now if we hit play, boom, now we've got a bunch of funky moving platforms that are all spinning like crazy. So, that's kind of cool. So if we were to just grab these stairs over here, um, alt, drag, rotate, we got that there, and we could just drag this bad boy over here as well. Now if we were to jump into this, whoops, stand alone, we don't want to do that. Uh, new editor window. Sorry. New editor window. Now this could be a game, basically. We got this massive grid of platforms. Your goal is to get to the other side, which is fucking hard because they all spin really fast. So to make them spin a bit slower, we can go into our platform grid generator, mean cycle time, set that to 10, deviation of, I don't know, 3 maybe. Um, play. Yeah, they all should all move a bit slower, and they're still pretty small, that's kind of hard to jump on. So we could set this to maybe 0 0.75 and this to 1.5. And they might be a bit bigger, but they shouldn't overlap. All right, let's go in. Okay, so they're overlapping a little bit, but look, that's kind of cool. Now we have a platforming game, yay. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. So we could make that even slower again, but you get the idea. So now you've got a bunch of random, um, randomized platforms, and this can be anything you want, by the way, so we can set this to two by two. Now you can see where the platforms are gonna spawn. They're gonna spawn down there. If we hit simulate, dunk, like that. Another thing that we could do is we could actually promote all these to variables here. So we could set the mean cycle time to a variable, the deviation to a variable, yada yada yada. And then when we go in here and we access this, we'll have access to those variables down there. And then we could duplicate this and change it on a per instance basis. So maybe we could have this one over here with big platforms, 
this one down here could have little platforms and be that wide or whatever. Um, and you can see how that this could end up with, you know, insanely weird variations of different platforms. Another thing you could do in your platform BP is you could grab your static mesh here and we could go like this and we could actually say set mesh up there like that. And then we could say new mesh and we could promote that to a variable down here and we could say static mesh. Um, make that public and we could expose that on spawn as well. And then basically in here the default will obviously be the champ for cube. So if we go ahead and hit play nothing should change. Okay. But then if we were to um, go into our platform grid generator and go down here, we could also change this to say, I don't know, maybe we want to use a sphere. Have we got a sphere in here somewhere? Material sphere. Now we'll be able to have spherical platforms. <laughs> and now we'll spin just like that. Um, we could have triangle platform. Oh, actually, you know what we could do? Is what if we went here and we said um, make array. This is just me going off on a tangent, by the way. Like, feel free to stop this video at any time because I could just keep going all night. We could say get copy of array, and then this array we can say uh, get length. Sorry, not length. We want last index, and then we're going to say random integer in range from zero to the last index. Hook that up to there. And then we can say chamfer cube. We could say sphere. We could say what other shapes have we got? Um, I don't know. We could chuck some stairs in just for a lol. Um, maybe a cone as well. So what this is going to do is we could have an array of different static meshes down there. We're getting the last index, which is three, and then getting a random index from zero to three. So that's basically selecting a random element from that and then returning that into here. So now, when we run this, every single one of those um, little dinosaur things is going to be a random mesh. Oh my god, look at those stairs. They are friggin' terrifying. <laughs> so obviously this needs some tweaking because that mesh, that stair mesh doesn't work too well in this. So you'll need to test these. Um, maybe we can just make you a cone. Oh no, we've already got a cone. We could go a cylinder. Perfect assuming the pivot points in the center. Okay, that's cool. I like that. So now we have a bunch of different shapes that we can run through and jump on. Um, awesome. Now, I'm going to finish this here because I'm getting extremely tired now and I'm actually seriously going to go to bed this time. But if you wanted to, we set this platform BP up to use the... Um, move positions of the billboards but what you could do is you could also create a function um, that would randomize perhaps the height of these like maybe you could create a little a little option here that could switch if you selected it and then you could set move position 1 and move position 2 to x and y values of 0 but a z value of between like 0 and 100 or 0 and um, negative 100 and then basically what you'd get is on this here is instead of all of these platforms being still in the same spot they'd all move up and down at different heights and at different periods which would make the whole grid kind of move like a weird wave kind of thing which would just make the platforming even cooler um, look honestly there are endless ways that you could customize this but here's just a basic I don't know demonstration of what's what you could possibly do with this um, grid setup and the whole expose on spawn thing you could play around with this endlessly, like maybe you could parameterize these and I'm just going to stop because I'm getting freaking tired, but look, that's the idea. Um, let me know if you thought this was useful. I'm probably going to make sure that I've got a clear head before I do these tutorials from now on because <laughs> this is probably not going to make much sense to anybody who watches it, but look, that's all right. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and I'll do my best to answer it. And if you've got any requests, let me know as well. Um, and I'll see if I can get around to it. Um, but otherwise, that's it, guys. Um, I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Peace out. Close down your blade.